Well, it's time to catch up on our equipment maintenance. It's so important to make sure you take good care of the equipment that you count on. If you want to keep costs down, keep your equipment running properly, make sure you maintain it well. All right, let's have a look at what it is we're going to be working on for this video. folks so the first piece of equipment we're working on today is the ATV so I had it out and toured it around just a little bit to get some warmth into it and what we're going to be doing is cleaning the air filter and changing the oil and the oil filter in it but we, before we get going on that let me just air a bit of a pet peeve that I have now I see people on YouTube all the time who are doing maintenance or bought new equipment and that type of thing and they take the manual and look at it, shrug and throw it over their shoulder. Yeah, it looks cool and that kind of thing, but don't do that. You want to find your way to losing your warranty on a new piece of equipment? That's the way to treat your manual. You want to lose instructions for torques, for the types of oil, for frequencies and that type of thing. That's the way to treat your manual. I'm a retired millwright and a machinist. I never threw a manual out for a piece of equipment. Never. Don't do it. Keep that manual. All right, enough of that. Let's get on to working on the ATV. So this is a 2013 Honda Foreman Rubicon. So even though this bike is pretty old, 2013, I have got just over 2,000 kilometers on it. 376 hours. So it hasn't gone very far and it hasn't run a whole lot. But I still change the oil very regularly. I change the oil and filter look the same as with a lot of my equipment, roughly every 50 hours kind of thing. And oil is cheap compared to replacing an engine in this thing. So I have no problem with doing that. So we're at that mark for a number of pieces of equipment that we've got. So we're gonna get started on that. Now one of the things I like to do with the manual, most manuals will have instructions for how to do an uh, oil and filter change, that type of thing. Now I've got written down on the page that gives you the instructions for it, the size of wrenches that I need to do that. So I'm not trying to figure that out later on. I can just look here, oh yeah, okay, so I need a 17 millimeter, an eight millimeter, and a 12 millimeter. And I know just where I'm going to need them. So I've got those wrenches out, I'm ready to go. So it saves a lot of fooling around and a very handy use for your manual. All right. Let's get the crash cover on the bottom of this off and start draining the oil. All right, so there's the crash cover. And according to the manual and my notes, I need an 8 millimeter ratchet for these two and then a 12 millimeter for these two. And then this plate will just drop out of the way. So let's, uh, let's get that off. Alright guys, we've got the crash plate off. Now this has two drain bolts. Right here is the cover that the filter is in. There is drain bolt one, and back here is drain bolt two. So we're going to take one off first, let that drain. One of the other things your manual will do for you is give you torques on things. It's really easy to over torque some of these bolts and it's generally a pretty low torque. That's just 18 foot-pounds on those two bolts. 
you try to guess at that and you have a chance of damaging something and oh boy wouldn't that be expensive all right the only thing we've got left now is to uh, take the filter cover off In a lot of cases, these drain bolts will have an aluminum or copper washer under them. In this case, they both had aluminum washers under them. And I, I always like to replace those washers. For the extra little bit of money that they want for a couple of, the, a couple of these aluminum washers, I'm just quite happy to go ahead and replace it. So this has got a spring in it here. You got to be careful that you don't lose anything. Okay, so there is the O-ring to that. And we should be able to just pull this filter out. Yep, there we go. There's our filter. All right, we're going to get our parts cleaned up. Put new O-ring in. Yeah, that one's got a little bit of damage to it. All right, guys, there we go. We've got everything back together. Let's pour some oil in it and check for leaks. All right, folks, there is one machine done. I checked the uh, air breather and it's still nice and clean. Checked the coolant. It was actually there's a low line and a high line on the tank for that. And I was pretty much at the low line, maybe a teeny bit below the low line. So I needed about a cup of coolant into it. Considering that's the first time I've ever had to add coolant, that's pretty good. I imagine it does kind of evaporate off, but that's got the ATV ready to go. Now they do hold an awful lot of oil. This thing holds 4.7 liters and of course I know that because I could look it up in the manual anyway when you change the oil on something like this you'll need four liter jug plus another uh, one liter jug you need the filter and there is a uh, two plugs so you need the two aluminum washers seal washers for those plugs there is a big O-ring that goes over the cap that holds the filter in. And then there's a small O-ring that goes over the uh, screw mechanism that goes up through the middle of that cap. So a lot of little things. Uh, make sure you've got all of that in-house and ready to go before you start taking something like this apart. Refer to your manual. It'll tell you what you need. All right. Let's get this out of here and get on to the next piece of equipment. And that's going to be the tractor. All right, so the only thing we have to do to the tractor is the uh, engine oil and filter and check the air filter. And it's pretty straightforward. There's a regular external filter on the uh, opposite side there and just one drain plug to pull and dump the oil. So I did already run the tractor a little bit so that uh, it's warmed up and the oil should flow out of it uh, quite easily. All right, let's get that done. 
All right, here we are, guys. So, 14 millimeter socket. There, you can see how it's coming out nice and slow because I haven't pulled the uh, dipstick or anything. It just helps me know where things are going to go. So let's pull the dipstick out. And there we go. Now funny enough, this actually holds quite a bit less oil than uh, the ATV. The ATV had 4.7 liters. This is about a liter under that. Even though it's a diesel engine, which I find quite interesting. Next is the filter. And that's a little messy to get off. So where is the filter? Yeah, there it is right in there. You can see I uh, dated it and put the number of hours on it the last time it was done. So we're at 500 hours now. So let's get this off of here. All right, guys, we know we need 3.1 liters to fill this. So I have measured out two. All right, let's put one more liter into our jug. And then we'll see where we are. So that should have us pretty close. Let's get everything closed up. Start it up for just a minute. See where things are. amount below the full line. So let's go ahead and add just a wee bit more. I think that'll get it. There we are. We are right on the money. All right, let's look at the air filter. No surprise, there's definitely some shavings around here. There's a pine needle stuck in the housing. That's starting to get pretty dirty. I might order another one of these. But we'll take it outside and blow it out. And let's check our coolant level. Coolant level is good. Now besides greasing, there's one more thing I want to check. I'll bring you around to this side to show you. So this is the plug for the oil for this front axle. And people talk about them leaking and running low all the time. So this 
has not leaked a drop. Well, I hope you guys have been enjoying today's video, and if you are enjoying it, I'd really appreciate the like, and I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. And if you've got any suggestions, thoughts, anything like that, I'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get back to work. All right, well, there's two machines down. So next will be the sawmill, but it is getting a little late in the day now and starting to get dark. I hope we're not getting more rain. So we'll leave it there for today and then we'll see you in the morning. Well, good morning, folks. We're back at it. We are in full sun. It's going to be a warm day, so I've got all of my uh, sun gear on. So I don't end up getting too badly burned. So it's time to change the oil on the Woodland Mill sawmill. Now, according to the manual, they are recommending every 50 hours for this engine. There's no oil filter or anything like that on it, so you do need to be careful. Uh, I am changing the oil every 25 hours. 25 hours, when you think of it, is actually quite a lot of runtime. I have a total of 104 hours on this right now, and I've been running it for three years now, I think. So it is slow to pick up, and I don't like the idea of leaving this little engine that has no filter for that long between oil changes. So like I do with everything else, I've bumped up the oil change frequency a lot. So this hasn't run in a little while now, I left it longer than I should have with gas in the carburetor. So we're gonna start it up, let it warm up for just a little bit because it's such a warm day, it's hardly even necessary to do that. But we'll let it warm up a little bit, then shut it down, drain the oil, and then I'm going to drain the gas out of the carburetor as well because I'm not gonna need it for a while, possibly not until fall, maybe not even until next year. So let's get this taken care of. So I have no blade in it right now or anything. Uh, it's a good idea to take your blades out if your sawmill is going to sit very long. Because your blade's just going to get rusty. And I've got these uh, straps here to hold this head in place so it can't get away even during high winds. I don't need to take those off. So let's see how well this starts up. Well, that's pretty good. All right, we'll give it uh, a few minutes to run. Not long, maybe five minutes, and then we'll shut it down and uh, drain the oil. All right, just a quick thing I wanna show you uh, with the sawmill. I have heard issues with people burning their clutches out quite early uh, on the sawmill. And I am gonna show you what to watch for to know if your idle speed is too high. That's often what it is. The idle speed is too high, and the clutch will partially engage all the time, and that's gonna burn it out. So let's go around to the other side of the mill here. So what I'm gonna do is increase the throttle. You'll see everything start to turn, but, but before it turns, you'll hear this dinging sound. So listen for that. So there's where the clutch is behind here. And I'll start giving it a little bit of power. All right, so you hear that dinging sound that it's doing. Let's go around where you can hear me better. So if you're hearing that dinging sound, your idle is too high and your clutch is partially engaging and that's gonna wear it out really quickly. Now there is a very easy way to adjust your idle speed. Uh, it's not complicated at all and it's in your manual. So I'll show you this. So we're looking at the carburetor back behind here. There is a Phillips screw right here. You can see how this is kind of indented to line up with that screw. Turning that screw is what adjusts your idle speed. So it's really easy to do. There's nothing complicated at all. So if you hear that ringing, turn that down. And as I say, 
that's in your manual. All right, guys, we've been running more than long enough for this. So I've got my uh, tow board here and sit my oil pan on it. Now, according to our manual, we want WD-30 oil in it. And it holds uh, 1.1 liters. It's nice to know the amount. So you can measure that amount out and pour it in. And if you've got a whole bunch left over, you know something's wrong. All right, we'll just let that drain. And as you can see, the oil does not look dirty at all, but it's time to change it. And as far as I'm concerned, the oil not looking really dirty is a good sign. Now you can wear gloves if you want with this kind of thing. Uh, I, I often don't um, because I find that the gloves that you wear just make my hands really, really sweaty. So they seem, with this kind of thing, kind of pointless. Now oil in general is not corrosive. If you have a corrosive oil, <laughs> it's not going to work very well at lubricating. So this stuff isn't going to hurt you if you get it on your hands or anything like that. Uh, generally, any oil that you're working with around your home, oil is not going to cause you any, any trouble that I've ever heard of anyway. I've been working with oil for a very long time in my entire working career. And most of the time, unless the area I'm working in is really dirty, greasy, dirty, greasy stuff, I don't wear gloves. Yes, my hands get oily, but soap generally takes care of that. All right, there we are. I can look down in there, see the oil level. I checked it with the dipstick and it's right on the money. So it took pretty much exactly what the manual said it would take. Now be very careful you don't overfill your oil. Overfilling can be as bad as letting it run dry, as you'll get all that oil pumping up into places you don't want it, and it's gonna cause damage. So if you accidentally overfill it, it's not a big deal. Just very carefully take your drain plug out, let it go down, don't leave it too full. All right, next thing is uh, get both our plugs back in here, and then we'll have a look at the air filter. So as I was saying earlier, on this engine, there is no oil filter. So you don't have to worry about an oil pump or uh, having your oil level run low because it still has to fill the oil filter up. None of that is there. With this engine, all I do is after I've changed uh, the oil and got my oil level up where it should be, I just pull the cord a few times gently to make sure it's circulated into the spots where it's supposed to be and then check the oil level. This is just, these are oil baths. There's nothing pumping anywhere on these things. All right, let's see what our air filter looks like. It's actually really good. But we're gonna take this down to the shop anyway and uh, blow it out, take the sponge cover off of, the, off of it. That sponge cover has generally got oil on it as well just to improve how well it filters. Okay. Wow. It's getting plenty warm up here standing in the sun. <laughs> so glad I don't have to run this mill now. <clears throat> okay. Last thing to do is to drain the carburetor. Now this has, when you turn it off, the uh, switch also turns the fuel off, which is handy, but it doesn't let me run the carburetor dry. So I have to take the uh, drain screw out of the bowl. If you leave gas in a carburetor for too long, it will kind of get shellacky coating inside your carburetor and start gumming it up. And these days here in Ontario, possibly in Canada, all fuels now require ethanol. All gasolines have to have ethanol in it. At least the gas that you buy at a regular gas station. Used to be the high test had no ethanol. Ethanol has the terrible quality of attracting moisture. So 
you got to be very careful about gas leaving it somewhere in a gas can for too long especially untreated gas is going to get moisture in it like starting up your lawnmower in the spring when you haven't added anything to protect your gas you got a really good chance that that gas tank's going to have water in it and you know what that's going to do when you try to run that thing for very long you're going to end up with water in your motor that won't help it at all all right let's drain this i'll show you what it takes to drain it here so hopefully this is showing up so on the bottom of the carburetor this is the bowl to the carburetor here there is the bolt that holds the bowl in place do not take that one out you don't want to take that one out to drain your carburetor because you better be ready to catch a whole bunch of pieces that are inside that bowl so there's one here that you can see is a Phillips head screw that's the one that we're going to loosen off and that's going to let the uh, gas drain out of your bowl or at least most of it all right let's do that so you don't need to take the screw all the way out there we go just need to loosen it you see that all that's just sitting there in your bowl and the longer it sits in there the more chance you've got of it uh, turning into kind of a shellacky stuff inside the carburetor bowl so i don't know when the next time is i'll be running this which is why i'm gonna take the precaution of draining the bowl now all right that's all it takes all right that's it we're done it's really quite simple it's not much to it you just need to make sure you do it all and do it regularly and use your manual all right we're going to crank this thing down get the cover back on it and then get the heck out of this sun so i was asked by one viewer about the cover that i've got so this came from woodland mills i bought this as an extra so it's been out here in the direct sun and through winters for three years now and there is no stitching coming apart there's no sign of any fading it's a it's a very heavy cover and if you're looking to protect your power head even if you've got a roof over top especially through the winter uh, this is the greatest thing to throw over top of that power head keeps all the moisture and everything out even with a, a roof over top i would still recommend getting a cover like this and throwing it over top and this cover is going to last a long time like everything else that i've seen so far from woodland mills it's all really a very very good quality product all right let's get this in place all right folks boy so we've got one more piece of equipment uh, to do some maintenance work on and that's the john deere lawn tractor now we're going to do a separate video on it because that's a bit different uh, i want to look at the issue that it has with valve clearances so it's not going to be just a simple oil and filter change it's going to be a little more involved so i have a bit of an issue with starting that lawnmower i can't just turn the key and start it there's a little sequence that you've got to go through first to start it and i know why that is i just haven't done anything about it yet so that will be for the next video so for today remember keep your manuals refer to your manuals keep an eye on oil frequency changes uh, for your equipment make sure that you're following all the maintenance steps that are required for it and your equipment will thank you for it and it will just simply last that much longer preventative maintenance work is really the key to keeping equipment running for a long time my john deere lawn tractor 
is about 30 years old now and it it runs with no trouble at all and that's because I've always taken care of it and the same thing with a lot of other equipment I've got a snowblower that came from Sears that was my father's so it's at least 40 years old and it still works great so take care of your equipment, refer to your manuals, and follow their service instructions at a minimum. I always change the oil on my equipment more often than what they recommend, only because it doesn't hurt to do that, so why not? So that will be it for today's video. I hope you found it interesting, or at the very least a little bit entertaining. Now, if you've got any maintenance tips on this type of equipment that you would like to share, I'd love to hear from you. Put it down in the comments where everybody else can see it as well. So thanks very much for watching. And remember to be safe out there, be good to each other, and we will see you out on the trails the next time.